darling. I'm not madly in love. Ooh, darling. Oh, I just can't stop this feeling. At oh, I'm on. Hey, family, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. You know, I keep saying we're in the mental house, and I, I don't think that's um, appropriate, because a lot of us have been so desensitized to what is crazy that I have to continue to keep saying mental because our mentals are so bad. And the people that are in charge of us as civilians, as um, lay people, you know, we have, a. I think we need to do a total overhaul of the police system, all these positions of power because we're dealing with people who have gravitated towards these occupations because they're fucking narcissists, okay? And what they do is they get a kick out of subduing people, not thinking they'll get caught taking advantage of people, molesting people, all types of stuff, all in the name of they have a badge and you can't do nothing about it. And I guess it is going to take people. And I hate to really say this. You know, the only way you can feel empathy for somebody is, is, is if you walk a mile in their moccasins. However, you already know some people feel like they are, you know, immune to that type of stuff like this qualified immunity. I don't know if the story is true about the guy who had his son killed and uh-huh, he waited on him and then he went and offed his daughter. Okay? And a lot of people are really up in, you know, rage about it saying they hope it's a tr uh, a fake story, fake news, whatever. I don't really have no feeling about it one way or the other because unless we're going to take a comprehensive look at these people and find a different way, a new way of policing, yes, I realize that there are some people out here that are off the chain and off the grid and they got to be dealt with by any means necessary. But there's a lot of people who are absolutely insane and like I said, they gravitate towards these positions so they can beat somebody. They get dumped on by their wives. They get dumped on by their children. They're not respected in their own households. They have a very high suicide rate. I'm talking about the officers now. And a propensity to use drugs. Okay, but yet they're out stroking these streets Arresting people as if their robes are spotless. And their robes ain't spotless at all. In fact, they're full of dead man's bones. And I personally really don't have a problem with what happened to the officer's daughter if that story is true. And I, would, I hope a lot more of that happens until people start understanding what it feels like when the rabbit got the gun. Okay? Because it's all you can say is, oh, I'm sorry for you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. As if we have a magnet drawn to us that we should be treated this way. And the whole mantra was a setup for us to be treated this way. And that we supposed to accept this and move on. Oh, yeah. I know my 12-year-old got shot in the park for having a fake gun. Oh, yeah. I know you killed my 4-year-old. I know you. Whatever it is. You beat my wife in front of my face. You stumped my son out. And I, and 
or you try to make this my son watch his mama get beat the heck up. And all of it is so bizarre. And if it doesn't have any origin in policing, then you just being bullied by some crazy uh, infidels that's riding the streets talking about I'm police officer. When really they just vampires with a thirst for power and blood. Like that uh, 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 sergeant who said, boy, I'll remove your soul from your body. I mean, can you imagine somebody saying something like that to you? Can you imagine a law an officer of the god darn law telling you something like that? I will remove your soul from your body because you ain't listening to him and you ain't moving fast enough as if he's your daddy and you a child. You know, and your daddy don't even act like that. But I could even see it. But this is somebody who has no vested interest in your uh, uh, life, your liberty, and your pursuit of happiness. But he got the right to snatch your soul from your body and will tell you I'll take your. He's not the right type of person that I would like on these streets policing me. Which brings me to this other narcissistic broad. Um, and I want y'all to listen to it because it's so damn crazy. Y'all listen. Betrayal of trust. Guilty. That's the word for a now disgraced social worker who was caught sexually assaulting a 13-year-old boy who'd been assigned to counsel. Yeah, Pinky Shires has a death sentence if he's required to register as a sexual offender. What's more, the boy's mother found out about the assault through text, photos, and videos on the teenager's phone. You would be appalled at how often we see uh, a personality disorder with the abusers. In other words, they are above the law. They will not get caught. Things take yet another turn when the counselor shows up at the boy's home armed with a gun. She's already being charged with sexual assault of a minor and now she takes a firearm to, to, the, to the parent's home. I think, I think that really reveals her desperation. She got caught. We're taking a deep dive into the case so far and a look ahead at what's next for the boys' family. So I think this is a really solid case down against Shire's employer, and this is easily a seven-figure case. Let's begin with a long-time legal alert. Google? Now, in case y'all didn't hear that, I, I, I know a lot of situations like that. In fact, I have a brother that was assaulted sexually by um, uh, the, the, the school psychologist, okay? Um, so I take this stuff very, very seriously. The people that have been put in positions to help you heal from whatever your traumatic situation is, they're taking advantage of you. They're molesting you again. They are the perpetrators. But some of them have a badge, a gun, and all these little accolades that say, oh, I'm better than the normal person, and I can uh, tell them right from wrong. I'm not with it. I'm, I'm sad for this young 13-year-old boy that got molested by his social worker. It is... It just reeks of narcissistic abuse. I'm sick of the narcissistic uh, mindset that America has created. And I say, and I'm not saying that it's not prevalent all over the world. I'm just saying we breed them over here. We breed them over here. Because this is the home of, um, you know, where it's, it's the home of division. White against black, rich against poor, fat against skinny, and skinny against fat, and all that kind of stuff. And this is really a situation where, since y'all say that we are the leaders of the free world, and everybody gets their cues from us, then that means that we must be given cues of how to have unbelievably, unbelievably bad behavior to the rest of the world. 
So I'm not going to stay on here long. I want to know what y'all think. And how would you react if you found out your son sexual or your daughter's uh, person that has been put in charge to help them heal has been taking advantage of them as well? How would you how would you relate to that? How what would you do about it? How would you go about it? I'd like to know. And what do you think will stop some of the madness? Is it really an eye for an eye? What is it? What do we what are we missing here as a society? All right. I look forward to hearing your response. And if you like what you hear, Please subscribe and share my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. And there's not a day that goes by that I'm not madly in love. Ooh.